In this video we're going to be painting clouds wet on wet and I discovered that it is not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. not a landscape painter but I can't tell you how many times people have asked me to paint a landscape. I thought this year I'll put in some time and I'll do some practicing and when I get a painting that I'm happy with I'll share it. But then Dom asked me why wait? Why not take everyone on the journey with you? I thought about it for a little while and even though I'm not comfortable doing it I know that he's right. If I can show you how I'm learning maybe my method of learning will help you with yours. So with this video I'm going to share with you what I did on my, I think it's my second day of learning to paint clouds in watercolour. If you get value from my tutorials please give this video a like and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. The main thing I learned on my day of painting clouds was to not labour over it. Use a big brush, get the paint on the paper quickly and then trust in the watercolour to do its thing. Mix your colours first and if you were using a reference photo to paint from, don't try to copy all the detail. Just use it as something to glance at from time to time. I used some Ba Hong watercolour paper to practice on and I also practiced on the back of some old failed paintings of mine. I've got plenty of those. I keep them because I can flip them over tape them to a board and then practice to my heart's content. I've got my board on a slight angle and I've got some washi tape dividing my paper in half. I'll work on this top section first. I'm going to work wet on wet so I'm wetting it with some water. I've got a really large mop brush here and this is cobalt blue. I've mixed a little bit of water with it as well got my reference photo down the bottom there that I took. So I start right up the top and I'm only going to use the reference photo as a guide. I'm not going to follow it exactly. What I did wrong with this first one was I didn't wait for the paper to dry a little bit. It was too wet when I went in with the paint and the paint spread too far. So here I'm trying to reserve the white of the paper for the shape of the clouds. I can see that I've got too much water on my paper so I get my other mop brush and I sop some of it back up. And then I paint in a bit more cobalt blue down the bottom there. I can see that the paint is spreading further than I want it to so I use my brush just damp with a little bit of water and I try and clean some of it up. And then I thought I'd paint on the grey areas of the clouds. So here I've got a mixture of cobalt blue and cadmium red. And I can see at this stage again that my paper's too wet. I just picked up a bit more paint. As I paint, I'm mindful of getting the paint on there as quickly as I can, and I'm determined not to fuss with it. Just got to accept what the paint gives me. And then I got a bit more of the mixture of cobalt blue and cadmium red, but it's a little bit thicker this time. It's got less water mixed into it. And I started to paint on some darker areas. We 
because the paper is starting to dry and because my paint is a bit thicker, it's not spreading as far. So that was my first attempt and it wasn't too bad, but I knew I could do better. And there it is after it had dried. So what I learned from that first sample was that my paper was too wet and my colour wasn't dark enough. I didn't have enough pigment mixed into my paint mixture. It's because I had water on the paper and water in my brush and water in the paint mixture, it was all too much. So I needed to alter that with this second example that I'm going to do. This time I'll wait a little while. I'll let the water soak in a little before I start to paint. I'll use the same reference photo as well. Because I'm going to wait a little while until some of that water is absorbed, I've got time to mix my paint up. So this time I use more pigment. That's cobalt blue. I need a bit more of the lighter grey colour, so again, cobalt blue with cadmium red and some water mixed with it. And just in case I want an even darker grey, I'll mix those two colours together again, but this time I won't have as much water mixed into my mixture. I'll just put a small amount in. Okay, pick up the cobalt blue with my big brush. This time I'm not rushing like I did with the first one. I've let the water soak in a little bit. It's been about probably a minute, maybe a little bit longer since I wet it. And then I start to paint on the blue. With this study, I was more happy with the cloud formation, but I ended up getting some streaks in the blue area. So I think I was so busy thinking about the clouds that I wasn't watching what I was doing here. So now I'm starting to think about the shape of the clouds. As I paint, I keep glancing at my reference photo and I follow along the edge of the clouds. But as I said, I'm not trying to follow it exactly, I'm just trying to get the impression of it. I don't want to get caught up in the detail of them. Okay, when I was happy with the edges of the clouds, I picked up some of the grey, but I must have put a bit too much cobalt blue into my mixture because it doesn't really look that much different to the blue of the sky there. So then I got a bit more of the red and I mixed it in. And then I kept going. Then it looked a bit too violet, so I thought maybe I need to rethink the colours that I'm using. As I was painting, I was thinking to myself that I have to try and get this on as quickly as I can before the paper starts drying, but I probably had more time than I thought I had. And my paper is still probably wetter than what it should be. I feel like the paint is spreading a bit further than it should. But then over here where my brush is now, it was starting to dry. You can see I'm getting hard edges. So then I had to pick up a bit of water on my brush and wet that area down again. It seems it's a constant battle of getting the colour right and the timing right and the shape of the clouds right and not overworking it as well. So many things to think about.
Then I picked up some of the thicker pigment and I started to paint that on in a few places where I saw it was a bit darker there on the reference photo. I fiddled around a little bit with it and over here I tried to get more of a definition of where the bottom of the cloud touches the sky. I feel like I'm starting to overwork it a bit here. So there's my first two studies done. So the top one I painted on it and it was too wet. I didn't have enough pigment. The second one I think I overworked it and I ended up with these blue streaks here that I didn't like. So I sort of have to try and find a happy medium now. So before I painted any more clouds wet on wet, I decided to have a go and use a tissue to remove some colour like I've seen other artists do. Here I'm painting some water onto the back of a failed painting that I've got. I've placed a large heavy book under my board so I've got the paper at a slight angle here and here again I've got cobalt blue painting onto the wet paper. I'm just going to do a graded wash so it'll be darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. And then I need to let that sit for a little while until it begins to dry. It's too wet at the moment. Then I get a tissue, scratch it up in my fingers and I start to dab at the wet paint. You can see it's not as wet as it was but it's still wet enough for me to remove the paint with the tissue. I quite liked the effect that was giving but after I'd finished this one again I had the same problem of not having my paint dark enough. By the time it had dried it was quite pale at the bottom here. Here it is after it had dried. You can see I haven't got my blue dark enough or I felt it wasn't dark enough anyway. So then I thought, what if I add a bit more definition to the clouds by painting some grey onto them? So I waited until it was completely dry and then I re-wet the entire paper with some water. And then I got some of the grey mixture, the mixture with water mixed with it, and I started to paint on some little shadow areas. I'm not following a reference photo here, I'm just doing my own thing. Then I felt that my paper was too dry, I'd waited too long to start putting the grey paint on. So I wet it again with some water. And then I kept going with the grey. I got a little bit more water on my brush and I started blending away some of the edges. I left it to dry for a little while and then I dried it off completely with the hairdryer. And there's that little study dry. So I tended to fuss a little bit too much with that one I think. I couldn't get the paper the right wetness. And also this edge along here where the clouds start is not defined enough. So then I thought I'd have another go at the tissue clouds. I thought this time I'll make the colour a bit darker, the blue, before I start to try and take it off. So I got an old painting out of mine that had failed. I flipped it over and I taped it to my board. This is hot press paper which is probably not the best choice for this. but. I didn't want to use a new piece of paper for it. 
So I'm trying to darken the wash there at the top. So I'll let that sit for a little while before I attempt to use the tissues on it. Okay, I'll let it sit for a little while. It's not as wet as it was. I've got my tissue again and here I go, dabbing at the wet paint. So this is a really simple way of depicting some clouds, but I'm not sure I was sold on it. I think I prefer to see beautiful, loose, flowing brush strokes rather than dabs with a tissue like this. And here it is, dry. So with this one, I didn't bother coming back and painting the bottom of the clouds with the darker grey. I just left it as it was. I thought I'd try one last thing before I attempt a painting. This is the back of one of my failed paintings again, and I'm using the same reference photo. What I thought I'd do this time is I'd paint the grey areas of the clouds first before I paint the blue of the sky. So still working on the wet paper, but I'll start with the clouds. This is the grey mixture with the water mixed into it. And my board is on an angle like it was before for the other examples. As I put the grey on the paper, I'm mindful of leaving some of the paper showing in between the marks that I'm making. I don't want to completely cover it with the grey. Okay, there's a basic shape of the clouds there. As I said, I'm not following the reference photo exactly as I see it. I don't want to get bogged down in all the detail I see. I just want to give a loose indication of some clouds. Then I thought I'd get some of the darker mixture. But when I put it on the paper, it was too concentrated. So I went back, gave it a little mix, and I put a bit more of the red in there. Then I got my smaller mop brush that was slightly damp with water and I started to blend the colours together a bit more. Move them around a bit. I didn't like all that pigment sitting there in one spot so I moved it around, tried to. I also picked up a bit more pigment with that brush. I let that sit there for a little while because again, I think I was rushing with the clouds. I went in a bit too soon while the paper was too wet. Here I've got the cobalt blue again and I'm going to stop it just before it reaches the clouds. It'll give me soft edges against the edge of the clouds because the paper's still wet. I'm also trying to use a bit more pigment here. You can see I've been a bit bolder with the cobalt blue. I try to leave a little gap of white paper so I don't take the blue all the way over to the edge of the grey. I'm glad I tried it this way by painting the clouds in first because I realised that I was more comfortable doing it the other way where I painted the blue around the clouds first. Then I thought I could break up this mass of grey here with a bit more blue. I also didn't like the white edge at the bottom of the clouds here so I took the blue a bit closer to it. And in doing that, because my paper was starting to dry, I ended up creating a small watercolour bloom down there. And that's that one after it had dried. 
I love the paint colour separation that you can see, but I've got a bit of a waterline up the top here that I don't like. And of course that watercolour bloom at the bottom of the cloud after I painted in the blue area. But otherwise it's not too bad for my first attempt at doing it that way. So I spent all day doing those little studies and then I felt confident enough to have a go at doing a small painting. So with this one here, I wet the background and then I painted some raw sienna along the horizon line. And again, I'm using cobalt blue for the blue of the sky. So I'm leaving some white paper showing where the clouds will sit. And I blended the bottom away so that it blended in with the raw sienna. Then I came back with my smaller mop brush and I painted some grey onto the cloud areas. I've got links to all these brushes in the description of the video. I painted in the sea and the land and I went back to my sky because I didn't like this little area of grey here. So I re-wet it all with some clean water and I put a bit more grey on this area here just to fix it up. I was apprehensive about doing it because I didn't want to ruin it, but I just wasn't happy with it, so I knew I had to do something. Once I got the paint on there, then I took the paint out of my brush and I used it damp just to spread it out and soften the edges a bit more. And I put a bit more grey over here as well. I wasn't happy with that little section. The grey I'm using here is a mix of cobalt blue and burnt sienna. I decided that the red wasn't quite right for me, so I switched to burnt sienna. After a whole day practicing how to paint clouds, there's my first little seascape painting done. It's not great, but at least it's a start. This little seascape is now available as a tutorial on my Patreon site. So head there if you'd like to paint along with me. The link is in the description. All the brushes I used are also listed in the description. Yesterday a new book arrived that I had ordered. This is David Bellamy's Skies, Light and Atmosphere in Watercolour. I've only had a flick through it at this stage, but it looks like it will be really useful. I look forward to referring to it when I do some more practice. I hope this was useful to you. I will keep sharing what I'm learning as long as I'm not too embarrassed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. It's going too slow. I'm famous. I think it's going too slow. It's going too slow. Should I do that again? Do it again? Do it again? Yesterday, a new book arrived. As long as I'm not too embarrassed. That was really awkward. Mm -hmm. your eye again. So I hope this was useful to you. Is that where I go from? Yeah. Yeah?